Hi, this is Shadi and today I'm going to be discussing with you a very crucial and important topic and that is judo and street self-defense. Now, we all indulge in the competition aspects, the highlights, the history and technical analysis. Um, discussing all these things can be very fun and very uh, entertaining and also it allows us to grow as people uh, technically and intellectually but let's not forget that judo uh, specifically the first priority should be self-defense and becoming a better person and not to live with something for the rest of our lives just because of one moment and one moment that was out of our control that's why I appreciate channels like Gracie Breakdown who discuss these topics almost all the time and analyze situations and explain how grappling on the mats is different from grappling in the streets so I chose many criteria in order to choose these throws taking uh, into account the situation how it is different from the mats and also the law the law is very crucial when getting into fights because it can get us in a lot of trouble so here are the criteria the first one is I do not want to hurt my attacker because here's why I don't know about the country where you live in but here in France sometimes if the defense did not match the attack I myself can get into legal trouble so I don't want to be both the victim and the defendant uh, so if someone pushes you and gives you a mean stare don't go hill hooking them two I want to use as minimal force as possible and the takedown should be very rapid and three, I want to go down in a position to control in order to negotiate and neutralize. And the first throw or number five is the single slash double leg takedown. Now, I know this is a very controversial one. Uh, the single and the double can be uh, like a double edged sword. You can uh, get countered, you can use it very gracefully or you can use a ton of throws. And I said I do not want to hurt my attacker yet. If you do it like a wrestler slash judoka looking for the ippon or the five points or how many points a wrestler scores then yes you will do a lot of damage landing on the back of their heads on their spine the back of their necks etc however they can be done safely in a grappling uh, method and also they can be done to avoid the guard now I'm not it's important to uh, avoid the guard or landing in the guard in streets not because they're gonna pull you in the guard and arm bar you or triangle you No, this is not it but legs can be very dangerous uh, trained or untrained one kick to the face and that can be lights out and also scrambling legs getting past them in order to pass the guard is a hassle and it can waste time and they can get up in order to retaliate so if you want to do a a good single leg one example is the BJJ fanatics Andre Galvao one uh, it's a huge honor for me to share this video uh, he explains it it's a very calculated single leg uh, where you can either do a knee cut smash pass and also avoid stuff like the guillotine the kimura and also like uh, strikes it's a very good single leg in my opinion go check it out just type Andre Galvao single leg and it will pop up it's a 11 minute video he goes into details it's a very good one and when it comes to the double leg uh, do, do it technically no force and landing safely Lachlan Giles uh, Craig Jones's uh, coach demonstrates one where you can uh, pick up without any force and also force them down not like slamming them in a hurtful manner and also how to avoid the guard and establish a dominant position that is also very crucial in street fights number four is the ankle pick or the kibisu geishi like i said i want to use minimal force as possible um, the ankle pick can come out of nowhere um, going down and picking up the ankle can really unbalance someone no matter their weight their height their strength uh, i would suggest the in the inside ankle pick where you can land on the side and not in the guard uh, that would also be important uh, and here's the thing about wrestling takedowns like the double the single and the ankle pick uh, I would strongly suggest you do them from a point of contact like kind of like holding the shirt like a double uh, collar a grab or like an under pit 
a collar grab and like a necktie or un overhook, uh, underhook situation, anything, and then pull them to you and then go down and do it. Don't dive in to it like a wrestler because you might get in trouble like a kick to the face, a knee to the face, and that can really do a lot of damage and that can be mean lights out. Uh, do it like a judoka, establish uh, contact and then pull them into you like a kuzushi or unbalancing them and then go down and shoot whether an ankle pick or a leg takedown. Um, and also, like I said here, for example, you can do like a kochi, um, just establish some sort of contact and then go for these, uh, how do you say, takedowns, because again, legs are very dangerous, uh, a lot of strength can come from leg kicks, uh, leg smashes, they can really do damage to your face and knock you out unconscious, you can break the bones in your face from a very... Uh, heavy leg kick and also it depends what they're wearing as shoes so inside inside ankle pick and you know do a takedown that's very calculated in order to land in a very controlled uh, position and also where you can negotiate and neutralize so the third one is the coach Higari, the minor in a reap uh, again this is th this can come from a very surprising manner um, and it's relatively easy to pull uh, once you uh, train it. Uh, you can go down not in the best position like the others, but uh, you can either land in like a knee cut position or like a smash pass if you go to the other side. But um, when it comes to not hurting someone and also using minimal force as possible, it is a great takedown to do it. Why I do not want to uh, land in the guard or also establish control because someone get might get frustrated you don't know who you're dealing with and also they would want to get up and retaliate and their uh, response and reaction can be very dangerous that can be even more dangerous than the first initial uh, attack because now you took them down and now they're angry and they want to retaliate so uh, again, est establishing dominant position is crucial, side control, mount, uh, where you can pin them, hold them down and just negotiate, hey, I don't want any troubles, uh, I'm gonna get up, I do not want trouble and if they still show resistance, this is where, you know, you can resort to stuff like, you know, the, the paper cutter, the nutcracker, uh, you know, like a cross choke and holding the collar and putting your thumbs into their neck in order to uh, easily choke them, uh, a guillotine, uh, any type of throw like a Ezekiel or the Sode Guru Majime, uh, put them to sleep, no damage will be done, get up and walk away, this is crucial because you don't want to retaliate or someone they, can, they will have some common sense and just accept the negotiation and say hey I don't want any trouble. Now number two is Okuri and Deashi Harai, the foot sweep. Now, this one is uh, not the best one, not because it doesn't work, it clearly works, it's genius, it requires almost no force, but it takes a lot of time to master how to create an action in order to react with the sweep, uh, etc. It, it can take years to master, so it's not the best one, however, it does meet the criteria of not doing so much damage um, and also uh, requiring minimal force as possible. Uh, like Fabio Basile says, Deashi e magia, or Deashi is magic. You know, one moment they're standing, the next they're on their back flat. And again, you can establish a dominant control from it. Uh, no need to pass any sort of guard. So again, it's a very important throw. However, like I said, it's not the easiest to master. So but I will include it because it's very aesthetic, it's very effortless and this is what judo is all about. Um, effortless and also getting down in a very controlled uh, position. So the Ashiharai and Okuri Ashiharai are two of the best throws you can do or the best sweeps that you can apply but if I had to pick one it would be the Kochi, the one we saw before because 
you can do it from a static position you don't have to initiate like an action in order to react with the sweep as you see here uh, it's important to you know just go as fast as possible and take them down you know no hesitation no resistance uh, just immediately go and do it And the last one is the Osoto Gari, the outside trips, all the family included, Osoto Otoshi, Osoto Gari, Osoto Guruma, all of it is very powerful. Now, it's not the best when it comes to minimal strength because it does require some sort of grinding. Uh, so if you happen to run up against someone that's strong, uh, I don't know about that, but it's very effective and it's very simple throw as well. Um, and also it will land you in a very uh, advantageous position in order to control and negotiate. So here you can see uh, Osoto Otoshi, you just glide and really stick your foot to them. And Osoto Gari, you kind of like kick back like a mule. Uh, it's different. One, you drop the person and one, you just sweep the, the leg forward and just dropping them on their back again it can be done in a controlled manner and it can be done in a, a very hurtful manner as well actually all of the throws can really do damage even the the sweep uh, a lot of judokas passed out if you listen to my uh, historical videos but regardless this is judo you cannot guarantee 100 percent safety um, but these are the ones that cause as minimal uh, legal problems as possible if you want to if you want to put it in this way so again uh obviously there are uh, like very good and effective throws like the uchimata the iponsionage but these will cause a ton of damage uh, my sensei for example she pulled an iponsionage on me uh, i landed on my head uh, i when i was drilling it I, someone landed on their neck they stayed the rest of the session out so again it's very dangerous imagine if it's asphalt uh, etc also the uchimata can do the same thing uh, and there are throws that are not particularly street smart however they do work for example like the tomoenage the circle throw or the yoko tomoenage because you're gonna be in a very uh, not so good position you know dropping on your back uh, you don't know what you're landing on uh, etc and also they can evade it kind of like a guard pull gone wrong if you want uh, so these are my top five throws uh, to pull on the streets uh, in order to provide you safety and also not to uh, you know go against legal troubles as well uh, if you have another uh, suggestion or any other throws that you would like to add the comment section is wide open this is my choice these i'm not saying these are the best i'm sure there are tons of other throws and takedowns but these are my choices so if you have anything else to add the comment section is wide open this was shady and thank you for listening